Hello, my name is Tanya Sheridan. I'm an independent consultant with Close to My Heart. And today I thought I would come to you and share these adorable little ladybug happies, is what I call them, but little gift boxes. They each have a cute little ladybug tag. This one has jelly beans in it. So I just bought jelly beans and added, I picked up all the red and black ones because I wanted it to look cute and match. So there's that little box. There is this one, which opens up this way. Of course, I can't open it totally because I've tied it shut, but really cute. This one will also hold the treat tube if you wanna add the treat tube with the jelly beans. Let me fix this little guy. And then the third one sits up like this and it has a flat back to it and then it's angled at the front and then the little ladybug just extends from the tag and again, the little shaker can open. It does have sequins in it and just a cute little gift. It could be for baby shower or thinking of you or anything that you want, just cute little happies. Of course, you can take the entire process of these and you can apply it to a different collection, a different paper suite, a different theme. Um, you could do whatever that you would like. So I would thought I would take you through how to create each box. These are available as my create and take for the Scrapbook Expo event that is this weekend. Um, if you purchase the boxes, you will also receive my custom file that I created and you can cut additional ones out yourself on the Cricut. Now you will have to have the cartridges that I used or have access, uh, Cricut access, and I will post those cartridges, but um, you will have the file and you can create more if you so desire, either of this design, which was made with a stitched together collection, which retires at the end of June or any other collection that suits your fancy. So I'm going to um, show you a couple things and how to do the ladybugs first, and then we'll jump right into our little boxes. So this is the stamp set. Let me let you see it with the, the film behind it so you can see it a little bit better. Um, it has the little two little expressions. It says ladybug kisses and birthday wishes, and hey there, little lady. Oh, I guess it has three. It also has flying by to say hello. So there's three different ones. They all will fit inside the body of the ladybug, so they fit very nicely, or you can use them in different manners as well. You have the little ladybug's antennas, and then you have a couple little other images. So you have a little butterfly, and I think this is a little bug. I think it's supposed to be a bee. And then these are your three ladybug spots and you have some X's here and some little stitch patterns that you could use. So this is independent of the die cut and you of course can make your own ladybugs without the die cut. You could use it for different things on your layouts, etc. And then we have this um, die cut. They're called Thin Cuts with Close to My Heart. And this does retire at the end of this month. I do have a bundle available for the Scrapbook Expo attendees that you're welcome to do. Um, I know it is on low quantity, so if this is something that really um, jump starts your imagination, then you'll wanna order it rather quickly. Uh, I have a bundle available in my In All Sassiness designs, which is inallsassiness.com, or you can buy it on my regular Close to My Heart website. But you'll see that it comes with three pieces. So this is the ladybug's body. And you'll notice there's a tiny little hole so that you can attach the wings. And then it comes with a left wing and a right wing. And the little dots on the ladybug's back, they are stitched. So it makes a very elegant little um, indentation where you can then do the ladybug's spots. So these two are both available in the bundle. You can um, check that out again at inallsassiness.com. Um, but they can both work independently of each other. So if you already have a similar ladybug stamp set, you might want to just go with this one or vice versa. But they're really made to partner together and the spots are perfect on the stamp set to fit within the little holes. So I thought I would show you how to make the ladybugs first. And I did things a little bit differently because I wanted these to be a little bit sturdier than normal. So basically what I did was I took the size of the ladybug die, which is this here. I cut it out of black glitter paper. Hopefully you can see that. And I did it on Cricut because I wanted to have the, for the base, I wanted to have the little antennas attached because I had tried it on a layout and it wouldn't cut the antennas um, as tiny as I needed them. But then also they're, they're not very sturdy just as, you know, stamped and hand cut. So I created this image in Cricut. This is using our stitched together Cricut collection for the little ladybug. And then I just altered it to fit this one. So of course, again, you'll get that file. But you'll notice I cut out three and they're the exact same piece. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to take my adhesive runner and I'm gonna very carefully go over 
the antennas. And I'm gonna stack these. Whoops. Do you need to make sure that your antennas are going the right way? There we go. That one's just kind of curved a little bit. No worries. Okay, so it's gonna give it some stability. I'm gonna add adhesive to that. And just a little bit up there. I love this Versamat because if you get adhesive on it, it rubs right off. So it is perfect. It does have a cushion side on the other side for stamping. And again, I'm just gonna line up these bugs. And if the antennas don't line up exactly, I actually did that by mistake on one of them. I thought it actually looked cuter because it looked more 3D. But you can play with those and get them as exact as you want or not as exact. You might need to do a little bit more care on those just to get them. Of course, I'm under a crazy light, so it makes it a little bit harder to see. There we go. So they just kind of stack. And again, if they're a little bit loose, I like the way it looked three-dimensionally. So this basically is the base of my bug. Now these are our shaker elements. So these can be bought individually. They come six to a pack and they have a rim on it. And that's the piece that we're gonna need. So you just hold your thumb here and carefully pull this rim off. Then all this excess, it's just bonus foam because this is what you need and this is what is excess, okay? So you're gonna put this right on this black base on the circle part. It is very sticky, so I usually kind of just lightly put it on, and then once I know I'm, I'm good to go, I go ahead and press it down. Okay, so that's nice and sturdy. So then I'm gonna jump one step ahead, and this is the acetate disc, and to get, there's a film on it, so I just scratch it carefully and pull the film off. Sometimes it rolls right off, other times it's a little bit tricky, and I'm gonna set that right there. And then I'm gonna take my sequins, my loose sequins, and our brand new craft jars, which are beautiful. And I'm gonna take out about five, and I'm gonna use my glue dot runner, and I'm gonna glue those just kind of randomly into place. And the reason that I'm doing that is shakers have a tendency to all of the glitter and the insides to kind of fall to the bottom. And when they do that, it's just not as, not as pretty. So I'm going to put some in stationary. The recipient isn't gonna even know that, and they're gonna stay in place. It also captures some of the sequins, and it makes them kind of um, not all generate to one side or the other. And I love these because there's different shades of gold, there's different sizes, and there's some clear ones in there too. So that's about how many I want to add. Then I'm just gonna take, and you can decide how many shakers you want how many sequins you want, if you want it to be really full or if you just want a few. I usually do a pretty healthy combination because I just think that these are super fun and adorable. So about that many. Then the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna pull off this film. And when you pull it off, you want to be very careful because if you pull too hard, all of your sequins are gonna go flying. We don't want that to happen. And you're gonna do to the best of your ability, you're gonna line up this piece, put it down and see how it still shapes so you're all good to go. Okay, so we're gonna set this aside for a second with our body. And these fun things are the wings. There is a left and a right, so you wanna make sure that you have one of each and not two of one kind because they don't work as well. I've been there, done that. And this is the little um, dot. So there's three different dots. Um, just for time's sake, I'm just going to use one. And I'm gonna stamp those, and I just kind of rotated it so it did not stamp the exact same spot in each dot. If they're off a little bit, no worries, because a ladybug is like a butterfly. No two wings are the same. Wonderful thing about Close to My Heart stamps is they are clear, so I can see right where I'm supposed to be stamping. And if you mess up with these little guys, you just stamp again and you, no one is the wiser. I've learned that too. Okay, so those are all the little ladybug dots. There's little reflections in them, and because of the manner I stamped them, then they, they worked very well. Okay. So then what I'm gonna do, this is a little bit twofold here, is I'm gonna get a brad, 
And I'm just using some older brads that I had on hand. Close to my heart does now have silver ones that are very, very pretty. And I'm gonna pierce my brad through the little hole in the top of both wings. And then there's a hole that you can barely see in the top of the body. And I'm gonna prong that brad backwards if you can see that, just like that, okay? So now the next thing that I want to do is I want my head to be the same height as my body and I don't want it flinging around. So we have this leftover tape and I'm opting to put the foam tape on the ladybug versus the back of the wings because I don't want to overstep that bounds. And here I can see the definition of where it's gonna overlap this shaker element. So I'm just gonna put those there. Again, it is a very strong adhesive. It's, it doesn't want to go anywhere. So you just want to be super careful. Now for this guy, you can use liquid glass if you want. I am going to use glue dots just for time's sake. And I'm gonna put those, because it's going on the acetate, I'm gonna just kinda of put those about every inch all the way around the back of the black glitter body. I'm not doing anything with the wings, it's just the body itself. So I'm gonna get all the way around. I like the glue dot runners because I have pets and every time I have a box of glue dots on my desk, I feel like they go off on the cat's tail and the cat's dragging the box everywhere. So the runners uh, work very well for me. Again, liquid glass would work fabulous with this, but you do need to allow, have time to allow it to dry. Okay, so this is kind of tricky. So what I do is I usually put the wings inside a little bit because I wanna make sure that I get my, my top where it's supposed to be and I'm just gonna line it up. you notice I did not pull the film off of the top of the head. I wanted to make sure that I got this aligned first. Because that film is so sticky, it wouldn't have given me much wiggle room. So then I'm gonna slightly pull back the top of the body. Just like that and then press down. So now my ladybug is nice and happy. Okay, so the thickness is making these antennas stronger and then these pieces will open and shut however you would like. Now, that is how to make the tag. Now, a couple of things, depending on what you want to do. So here I use this gingham and I put that in my layer before I closed it up if you want to do that. For this one, I used the floss that's really thin gold floss and again I did the same thing but for this little guy we're just doing him independently so I'm not going to put a hanger but that would be a way to do a hanger if you wanted to do a hanger so once you have that foam tape lined up before you seal it then attach whatever you want as your hanger inside and you'll be good to go okay you could also use liquid glass to reinforce it on one of them I tilted it like this once it was attached and then I just slightly poured a little bit of liquid glass in here, wiped it off and let it seal around that floss and it was a very tight hold. So those are a couple things that you can do. But this is the tag. You of course could hang it on a standard gift bag. Uh, it would look very cute as a Christmas ornament. Um, I'm gonna do some more videos on some Christmas ornaments with the shaker cards later next month for Christmas in July. So make sure you stay tuned for those. But lots of cute fun. Um, you could also use it just as a little name tag at your dinner table. You could just you know, leave it. You can play with the wings a little bit so that they're more 3D if you want to do that. And I'll show you a couple other ideas how I use this at the end of the video. So I'm gonna set that aside and I am going to show you the tall box first. So that is this little box here. You notice the ladybug is attached with just a gold em embossing floss. Okay, so for time's sake, I went ahead and pre-scored, well, 
let me take that back. The entire box is already pre-scored, but I went ahead and folded it and reinforced the score, the scoring marks. And then I also used the red line tape, which is a very strong tape. It looks like this. Um, you can get it, I usually get it at the expo, call out to all of my other expo vendors uh, because they have the best deals on them, but you can get it on Amazon, what have you. It's just a very, very strong tape. Um, typically speaking, if I have a lot of time on my hands, I prefer the liquid glass that we sell from close to my heart, but with doing the presentations, I need everything to be sealed to move on to the next step. So I went ahead and did that and I'm gonna pull off the tape as I go. You of course can cut this out on either side if you want to cut it out again. And I'm just gonna fold these little pieces into each other. Um, typically when I do my folds, I will fold it one way and the other just to make sure that I have maximum movement ability. So I'm gonna seal that piece there this little flap is going to go underneath. You want to make sure you have crisp corners. So I always try to do that. These two pieces are going to be a little bit trickier because you're kind of putting them down at the same time. So I've taken the film off here. This piece here I'm going to tuck but at the same time, I need to make sure it doesn't stick until I have it completely in the corner. So I'm trying to get it into this corner here. And then once I know it's in the corner, then you can kind of manipulate it and create seams, okay? This one here, we're gonna bend back a little bit. And then you have these two little flaps here. They, they are scored. So they are just going to go down and reinforce this corner. And they're kind of at an angle, you'll notice. So it makes them easy to determine what they are. And again, it's just gonna fold in. And because I have the tape there, it's just gonna hold that a little bit better. And then this piece here does not bend. It looks like it would, but it doesn't. So whatever you want to put inside your box, you're gonna do that first. And then you're gonna line up the piece from here with the bottom row of the holes and then you're gonna fold this piece over and line it up again. And it's kind of a little bit of a wiggle to go through. So I'm choosing to use just a standard black ribbon. This is one that Close to My Heart used to sell a long time ago and it's still my favorite. It's just so vibrant in color. So I'm gonna weave this through just like that, the back. I'm going to come through the front. I'm going to tuck it down and go through the top layer just like that. Okay. So it's not super tight because I know that I have to come back and do that again on the other side. And sometimes if you're using a thicker ribbon, just folding it helps to get it through that first hole. go back up through this hole again, just like that. And my ribbon isn't quite as centered as I want it, so I can kind of manipulate that. I do want my, my back to be flat, so once you have it through, you might have to tweak your ribbon a little bit so that it, it looks like a stitch. And then I just came to the front and you can determine how hard you want your knot to be if you want a knot or if you want to do a bow. This ribbon's a little bit tricky to do bows, so I tend to do knots. And then I just took my scissors and came back and trimmed it. I like the little angle look. And once you do that, you can kind of manipulate it more just to get the feel that you want. So then on the bottom, I used our thin cut scallop, which it is retired, but you can cut a scallop on your Cricut very easily. This was just my go-to die. So I'm lining it up on the edge. And of course you don't have to line it up. You can not line it up and, and have the scallops cut, cut off. But that was the way that I liked it the most. 
When I do this, I typically try to do it this way and then cut off the excess so I don't cut myself too short, just like that. And then what I did is I wanted to keep that whole ladybug theme going. So I used these black and white dots. These are from the black and white dot collection. And I went, kind of need to pull this up just a little bit. There we go. I'm going to go all the way across with these big black dots. And typically these dots come in three sizes. So I find that when I'm scrapbooking, I don't use the bigger ones as much. I like the smaller ones on my layouts. And so projects like this are a great way to still use up my supplies and feel like I got my full money's worth out of them. And I'm gonna show you one other trick on this one once I get all my dots across. So this box is one that is meant to be shut. It's not necessarily going to be open. So if you notice, this one is very flat. And if you notice on this one, it's not as flat. It's a little bit more elevated. So what you can do is you can use these dots, these foam dots, they're perfect little dots, and you can put them on the back of that scallop. And you could use, these are the thin dots, but we do have thicker ones. So that'll give you a little bit more depth, a little bit more elevation. And I'm just putting one under each, but if you notice, I'm not pulling that film because I don't want it to stick. I just want it to provide some extra depth for myself. Just like that. And then that makes it a little bit higher up. And you can fold it, you can manipulate it more if you want it a little bit more open. I like the look where it's not blending in as much. You could also, if you wanted to, you could go under, if you wanted the scallop to be more defined, you could go under the scallop with a piece of the ribbon or on um, the black glitter and you can see the definition more. So that is the first one. And then I just basically threaded the name tag through that ribbon. So the second one I wanna show you is this little fun carry out box. So let's move this. It is this box and I adore this. I think it is so cute. This paper works really, really well with it because it is double-sided and both patterns work really well for the box itself. Sometimes the patterns will work one way and not the other way. With this one was beautiful, it works beautiful. So again, just like with the other one, I went ahead and did all of the reinforcing of the scoring marks. It's great that the Cricut can cut those for you. And I went ahead and put my red line tape around all of the spots. And so this box is going to come up like this. So you're gonna start at the base, pull off the film, and I'm gonna show you a couple of tricks. So you wanna use the flat side that has the little slit. That's what you're gonna use first. And we're gonna do that on both sides. Because we want our slit to actually be functional and be able to work. Pull this one up and seal that one just like that. And you'll see how these two pieces kind of hang out, right? So then you're gonna manipulate it so that this little notch goes inside that little slit. I think I got mine too tight. Just like that. Like I said, you kind of have to Hit that, there we go. Have, have to hit that slit just right, and then you can reinforce it. We're gonna do the same thing on this side. I'm gonna loosen up that tape just a little bit. And you wanna hit that slit just right, that notch. manipulate it a little bit from the inside. The second side, I always feel like it's a little bit, well, a little bit trickier to get in because you don't have as much to work with. There we go. And then you can reinforce it on the inside. And to reinforce it, I just put it down on its edge and flip it and pressure it down. 
Now, a couple of cool things about this box is if you wanted to make it stronger, you can see here how it will hold it, the little treat tube that are included in the kit. Um, you can go in and cut your cardstock to fit and just add extra cardstock. I typically do that at least for the bottoms. When you buy a gift bag, quite often you'll see there's a little cardboard disc inside of it. So it just makes it a little bit stronger, but it's not anything you absolutely have to do. So then I have these two scallops that I cut, and they're just out of um, the same color cardstock that's featured. And I'm gonna put that along the bottom of my box. And again, you can line it up however you wanna line it up. I like if at all possible to keep my scallops ending at the end of the box, but that's up to you. And then the second one, it's important to do before, that's gonna go up at the top. So it's right underneath this fold. So I'm gonna put it all the way across. This scallop goes up, this scallop is going down. I'm gonna flip it over. You kinda of have to manipulate your scissors a little bit to get in at that angle. And you can do the whole box. I'm just opting to do the front of the box, but you could certainly do the whole box. I'm gonna fold this backwards, just like that. You're gonna pull these two pieces together, and then these guys are gonna snap over it. And it makes a cute little carryout box. Okay, so that one popped back out. There we go. So then I went and I found, for this one, I didn't want to use black because I wanted the ladybug to stand out. So I have these fun red dots. And so I just wanted to accent a little bit. There are red dots in the pattern paper. I don't know if you can see that or if you have a glare on the camera. But I just put two at the top and two at the bottom. Give it a little bit of space. And then I adore this Rick Rack. This is also a close to my heart um, previous ribbon that has now retired. And I did two things. I tied a knot, didn't tie it super tight, just kind of a loose knot like that. And then I attached the ladybug with a second piece. So I didn't try to tie it in a bow because it's Rick Rack and I really struggle tying Rick Rack into bows. So I just wanted it a knot, but then the ladybug is actually attached with the second piece. And she is right at the right height where she can just sit and she kind of, the box makes her extend out like she's flying. So that is all there is to the second box. You can manipulate this as much as you want. You could take liquid glass and go over the little dots in the pattern paper if you wanted to. That would look stinking cute as well. So this one is an old friend brought back. These are our treat tubes that we sold several, several years ago, and I'm just constantly looking for new ways to use them. Um, I've bought some at other stores and so forth, but I like these the best. So your kit is coming with three of these, but originally when we came out with these tubes, we had a variation of a box. And of course those boxes are long gone. So I made my own in Cricut. Um, I used the Artiste collection and I measured it to make sure that the treat tube would fit. And of course you can sit that out just like that. It doesn't have to be the box, but I thought the box added some cuteness. Um, so it's just a black cut and then I cut my pattern pieces to match. And then I took the Rick Rack all the way around, which just somewhat secured it. So again, you would get this file. I took the liberty to go ahead and do the box cut it out again, score it, and do the, the film. The original Close to My Heart boxes were narrower on, maybe not in height, but on all of the perimeters. And I felt like they tumbled a little bit. They were very cute. They looked very balanced. Of course, they didn't have my giant ladybug on it. Um, but. I felt like they were a little bit unbalanced, especially for the weight of the ladybug. So um, I just widened it and kind of made it my own. I was very happy with how it turned out. My daughter keeps taking it. But these would be really great for like neighbor gifts or um, quite often I like to give my FedEx drivers just a little happy. So something like that, maybe make a few and take them to an assisted living facility. So 
So I'm just gonna fold each piece inward as I go. I love this style box because it has so many possibilities. I like cutting it out of the solid and then adding the pattern paper. And truly, the pattern paper is just the leftover spots from where I cut out the other two boxes. So I was getting the most potential out of my paper. So this box is not going to be open. So the other two styles I showed you, um, we had to leave it so that they could be open. This one is gonna be totally sealed. So you don't have to really worry about if you, you know, folding which piece or if you accidentally put adhesive on the wrong boxes, the wrong parts of the boxes. I'm gonna tuck this guy in and there's your box. And you wanna make sure that the corners are in the corners and not smushed. And so I just kind of reinforced it like this. I have all four corners and I'm just pressing down both sides to make sure it fit. So then the next thing that I did was I cut this little piece. I designed it on the Cricut to fit exactly around the hole because I didn't want the boring black on top. There's so many things you guys can do with Cricut once you figure it out. I use them in every aspect of my business and pretty much of my life. Okay, so it works like that. If you feel like you need more adhesive, you might wanna do like a glue dot or liquid glass in just the corners just to make sure that it holds down. Then I'm gonna take these pieces. Again, these are just scrap that I made work. I have the same border, so I think they're one and a quarter. I will give you the instructions, but I think they're one and a quarter um, by two. And I'm just gonna alternate the pattern all the way around. If you don't have a pattern paper, you could use a cardstock. Just switch up the colors a little bit, or you could random stamp on it if you wanted to random stamp on it. That is certainly doable. I do want to make sure, and I did this one opposite of the other, but I want to make sure that this pattern is going in the same direction as on the other side. And that is all it is to it. So that's the cute little box. For this one, I was a little bit sturdier. I have the rickrack coming from one side of the ladybug to the other, and it kept sliding after I put it in the box. So what I did was I just took a tiny little glue dot and glued the ribbon to the treat tube so that way it would stay. You can either extend it down like this or you can have it kind of sit up on the platform, which is what I had mine. I actually sat it up, I don't know if you can see that, but I actually have it set up at an angle so you see both sides of the pattern paper and that's how I set, had it on my desk. So that is the cute ladybug. I wanted to show you before I sign away, a couple other things I've done with this die. So this is one of my cards. This is also available in my shop. And so this one, the little wings open, the shakers, and then of course it opens. And there's another variation of this one where the sentiment is actually inside the ladybug. And then this is my ladybug love. And you're not gonna be able to see the whole thing at one time. So I'm gonna stretch it as far as I can but this layout is called Cute as a Bug. And it of course you could change your title if, if you didn't have a cute necessarily. Um, but it has the beautiful Gerber daisies that are done with the shimmer brushes and miniature ladybugs, which are also from our Stitch Together Cricut collection. Has some flip flaps. And then I love this cascading, I don't know if you can see it from the glare, but I love this cascading flower and it has the shaker rims and then the ladybug down at the bottom with the shaker elements. And then of course, flip flaps to boot. So um, those are several different ways that you can use this die beyond using it in the gift boxes. So I hope you guys will have a great day. All of the products can be um, purchased, or the kits for all three of these can be purchased at www.inallsassiness.com. Have a great day and make it sassy.